Oh my dear, oh my goodness. Hi everybody, we're here. Um, I have some wonderful people here. Sorry we've been taking ages, but we have been planning some amazing things. Um, we're just gonna get ready for you, okay? I'm just taking everybody, let everybody know that we're here. It takes a while for you guys to come in, so that's all good. Okay. Um, so we have a new person here, and you're gonna see her very shortly. She is here from, don't tell me, Thornley Ward area. And we're gonna meet her very shortly. She's gonna say our prayer today. And we have the other usual suspects on our panel. And we're excited. Sister Kendall is not here with us today. Sorry, Sister Kendall's family. She's not here with us today, but she will be back. So don't worry. Okay, that's enough taking people. If you want to watch, just come and have a look. Say hello to everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> I'm just wondering how we can get you all in the same shot. You know, they say we're going to be doing this a lot. And here's a picture of our saviour. So we like to maintain the spirit by having them here. We have a candle here. Uh, what's that scripture in Matthew 5, 14 to 16? Um, Let your lights so shine. Let your lights so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Beautiful. That's my favourite scripture of all time. Yeah. Okay, before we get started, as always, we say the prayer. Sister T is going to say it for us. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this beautiful afternoon and thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for all your love and mercy and for all the wonderful blessings that we receive throughout the day this day. We're grateful for this opportunity that we have to be able to um, share our testimony and be able to reach out to our brothers and sisters over technology and everywhere in the world that they're at. Um, we are truly grateful for the gospel in our life and this knowledge and that we receive at this time and the spirit that is here to, to teach and, and guide us to do the things you desire for us to do. And Father, at this time as we are to open our um, live teaching at this time through Facebook, we truly ask for thy spirit to be upon each and every one of us that are here in this house at this time to share with our brothers and sisters that are on the other side of um, this camera, uh, we ask the Spirit to be with them as well, everywhere they are in the world, that they may be able to open their heart and their mind to receive the message you have in store for them this day. We ask for your Spirit to be among us at this time as well, to lead and guide us in all the things to say um, at the right time to the right people. We ask for your forgiveness for all our trespasses, and your Spirit to be with us now and forevermore, and we say this for your name, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Okay, thank you for your help. Well, our prayer. Okay, so our schedule today and today's live, we're going to do it like this. Uh, we just had the prayer, we're going to do a little um, intro to the Q&A, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so uh, we are going to have introductions, personal introductions, you're going to get to know a little something about all our missionaries and why they're here. Um, and then we'll go into our Q&A question. We have one today. I think just because we're starting this for the first time, we go very easy and slow. But please come forward with your questions. Remember, they are anonymous. Nobody needs to know who is, has asked them. Or you won't be exposed. Um, but we will answer your questions as best we can. Okay? So we'll do this every Friday. Um, and then after that, after the answering our questions, we are going to share our testimony. And then close. All right, that's what we're doing today. Enjoy. So who's going to go first? I think the <coughs> brethren should always go first. How about that? So um, my question for each of you as you introduce yourself is, what is your favorite food? <laughs> Are we doing favorite scripture or is that up? Yeah, favorite scripture is all in that too. So a little bit about yourself and your family, where you're from. You're if, really um, my question is, what is your favorite food? I'm going to expose you. Um, and then you share your favorite scripture. Okay. okay. Mm. All right. Well, I am Fisher. Elder Fulcher. <laughs> Fulcher, like full tummy, and cher, <laughs> like cher, but kiwi, I guess. <laughs> um, and I'm from Brisbane. Um, I have been out on the mission for about a year, coming up to a year really soon. Um, and I come from a big-ish family um, of 
six kids and two parents, so eight of us total. And my four older siblings, so I'm, I'm the second youngest, they, four older siblings all served missions, two boys and two girls. And so they really, they kind of like were a great example to me um, of, of being the missionaries, yeah. And so I kind of had no choice, kind of get down to my end. Uh, I had to serve a mission or else I'd probably be disowned from the family. My parents would <laughs> drop me on the side of the road. I'm joking, I'm joking. But it definitely was um, something that made me always look forward to it as a child growing up. I always knew I was going to serve. Um, mm. But as I got closer, um, I needed my own witness. And that's when I, when I prayed, when I studied, to really know that this was right for me. And I got that. <clears throat> so that's why I'm here today, because I want other people to have that experience. Um, my favorite food is... <laughs> I, I'd probably say it's it's Thai food, any Thai food. Wow. Um, I like curries, spicy food. Thai food. Um, yeah, all good, all good. And I try to cook some, but not very good. Mm. Uh, my favorite scripture is Alma 26. 26. And that better be the right reference or that's embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, twenty six, twenty seven. <laughs> oh, um, and okay, and it's about the. It's about Ammon, um, and he is. He is basically feeling feeling depressed um, about about failures. And there's a few scriptures like this in the Book of Mormon, um, and I actually like twelve in this chapter as well. Maybe I'll read twelve. I like 12 and, and 27, um, but in 12 it says, Yea, I know that I am nothing, and as to my strength I am weak, therefore I will not boast of myself, but I will boast of my God, for in his strength I can do all things. Yea, behold, many mighty miracles have we, have we have wrought in this land, for which we will praise his name forever. And then in 27 it, it just talks about how God comforted him, but in Throughout all of Ammon's experience, he's always doing it with the Lord, and he's always giving the glory to him. And I think that that humility is something that I want to have as well. So I really like that scripture. Awesome. I love that scripture. It's very pleasant. That's impressive. All right. So we're going to hear more from uh, our culture tonight because it's full of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. <laughs> so um, let's head over to Ammon Thank you, our culture. Hello guys, this is Aaron Matua and I'm excited from Samoa, so I'm always funny, really get funny. <laughs> so uh, I'm been on a mission for um, one year and two weeks, so uh, I, I enjoy the work, it's, it's pretty good to, um, to, uh, to find peace in ourselves and also to be tested and to what to do in the future. and. I, I come from a small family, it's not that big, there's eight of us, and, <laughs> I'm, the, <laughs> and I'm the oldest, I'm the first person from my family, uh, in my family, I've got three brothers and two sisters, and, um, and my family is the all members, so yeah, and I'm here in Australia to, to share the same message. But how can we find a blessing from God through the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I'm, uh, I'm just going through about my first scripture. I find in Messiah chapter 4 and verse 14 and 15. This is about, <clears throat> this is about parents to children and children to parents. And this is about uh, the families we can learns about the, the true principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how can we uh, keep the commandments from Heavenly Father. And in verses and in verse 14 and say, and he will not suffer you children so that they go hungry or naked, neither will he suffer that they transgress the laws of God and fight and quarrel one with another and serve the devil who is the master of sin. 
or who is the evil spirit to which has been spoken of by our fathers, he being an enemy to all righteousness. And in verse 15 say, But he will teach them to walk in the ways of truth and soberness. He will teach them to love one another and to serve one another. This is my favorite scriptures and this is what uh, actually I'm here in Perth to um, teach uh, the message about um, the gospel of Jesus Christ, bless famines and widows and how famines uh, can teach the right principles in, uh, about the church of Jesus Christ and how our parents teach the children and uh, how the children uh, um, keep the commandments from our parents and this is what Nephi taught to his brother Lemon and Lemon, obey, obey the, obey the parents and obey God. It's a, it's a powerful principle in myself, and I'm actually saying, uh, I love my parents because they teach me a lot about Heavenly Father and His religions. So it means I feel my mom before I, I feel my mom before I, before I feel God. <laughs> so. Um, this is where I actually love uh, this scriptures is taught in my heart and in my spirit. Uh, this is the time that we are preparing ourselves to meet with Heavenly Father at the end of this time. But this is the things that we, we need to do and to preparing ourselves to uh, listen to what our parents um, teach us and listen to what the spirits help us and to serve our brothers and sisters and to love them like Jesus Christ did before. Mm -hmm. And the end of my speak is about my favorite fruit. <laughs> <laughs> she already knows about my favorite fruit. So, um, all right. This is my favorite fruit here in the trailer is KFC. I don't want to say that now, just to listen. <laughs> and that's my, um, yeah. And that's the end of my talking. Okay, so if anyone sees these two missionaries like on the side of the road or something and you just think, oh man, just I just <laughs> want to do something for them. And <laughs> 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 I'm is sold if you just give him some KFC and Anna Fortune loves it's not yeah. cheap though, so I don't feel bad if you don't get that. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's some people you know they get stuff, eh? Yeah. Do it find, them. find them for you out of the <laughs> Okay, moving to the sisters. Here we go. Who wants to go first? Yeah. I would mind. Okay. Hi everyone. Malolele. Um, I'm Sister Tukuapu. <clears throat> I am from Tonga. Tonga. <laughs> and I'm <a> team. <laughs> so I am from Tonga. Um, I am 21 years old. I've been on my mission for a bit over a year. And I came here to serve a mission because I know how much my Heavenly Father loves me. And I know that He loves each and every one of you so much. And just having that blessing that the Lord has always blessed me with in my life, in the Gospel. I've always grown up in the Gospel. I'm from a family of 10 children. Um, no. We, I always like to say we may be born in the things of this world, but we're rich spiritually. Because mm -hmm. our parents have always taught us in the gospel, and it made us happier than I don't know those that had money. Just kidding, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the whole reason why I wanted to come and serve a mission is because I, I love it. I wanted to share that that blessing with those around me. I'm here in Perth. And those whoever um, the Lord called me to come and serve, and um, one of my favorite scripture that I I've been holding on to ever since growing up, because I always wanted to do this, is in the Book of Mormon. It's another testament of Jesus Christ. Um, so any of you that haven't seen it before, um, this one looks a bit old. I've always had this ever since I was in high school and wanted to take it on the trip with me here to Perth. And um, one of my favorite scripture is in Alma 29, verse 9. And this is the same person that all the future, oh no, not the same person that all the future was talking about, but it's the same book as um, one of the amazing missionaries that was in the Book of Mormon. And this is him glorifying the Lord and um, having that desire, that they, the same desire that all of us had and still have. That's the reason why we're here today. And all of 
millions of missionaries out there doing the same thing. Um, and this is him telling the Lord how happy he was to be here. And it says in this verse, I know that which the Lord hath commanded me, and I glory in it. I do not glory in myself, but I glory in that which the Lord hath commanded me. Yea, and this is my glory, that perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance, and this is my joy. And honestly, this is my joy as well. And I really like the part in the scripture where it says, we're just instrument. An instrument is just like a tool. We're not actually the one who does the work, really. The Lord is the one who's doing the work. This is his work, and he does it. And he does it because he loves each and every one of you. And my favorite food is KFC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I love KFC as well. Oh my dang. I, I <laughs> It's good. So if you I see, don't know, just love guys here anymore. <laughs> if you see Sister T on the side of the road and you want to do something nice for her, <laughs> just get a KFC. <laughs> and this is my beautiful companion. Okay. Thank right. you, Sister T. Oh, I'm Sister Furi. I'm from Perth. Um, I have three, four siblings. <laughs> Sorry, four siblings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the second missionary in my family. Uh, my brother is up in Canada. Um, I couldn't think of what my favorite food is because I like most food, uh, but I really, really like uh, poiki, which is a South African dish that you, you cook over a fire. You basically layer the, the meat and then the vegetables. It's like a stew. It's very nice, uh, but also ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my favorite scripture is in Second Nephi chapter one verse fifteen, and this one. Is what Nephi says just before he well, starts quoting Isaiah. Uh, but I really like it just because I, I think it, oh, it's, just, it's just beautiful. I'll just read it. It's in verse 15. But behold, the Lord hath, the Lord hath redeemed my soul from hell. I have beheld mm -hmm. his glory and am encircled about eternally in the arms of his love. And the reason I like it so much is because the Lord, he redeems all of us and we can behold his glory if we follow him. And uh, we can feel his love. We can feel that eternally. And uh, it's because of his mercy and his love and his goodness for us. Uh, but I don't know, I think it's because of that that I wanted to come and serve a mission. But also, I, I just grew up around missionaries when we were in South Africa. My parents had the missionaries living on, on a flat just really close to our, oh, I think, on our property at one point. And uh, we just always had the missionaries over. So I, was, I grew up around missionaries and I always wanted to, to serve a mission. and to teach people about Jesus Christ, about the knowledge that I've always had and, and valued. Um, but also my brother served the mission. I think he was definitely a very good example for me. And uh, he, he told me that missions are eye-opening and they definitely are. Mm. Uh, just to let people know who don't know, how long do you serve mission sisters? So we serve for 18 months. 18 months, and how old do you have to be? 19 is the youngest we can go. 19 and up, yeah. Okay, so 18 months and 19. So if there are any youth watching and you are girls, you're a young woman, um, just do it. <laughs> yes. So from the age of 19, prepare until you get to 19 and then away you go. How about you, Artis? What uh, age do you have to be? 18. 18. You yeah. are 17. For yeah. how long? Two years. Okay, parents, if you want to send your children out to go somewhere for two years, then I do a place. <laughs> okay, so let's come back here. Thank you, Artis, for and sisters for introducing yourself. Now we're going to get to the heart of why we are here right now. Today we're doing a Q and A, and this is this segment is for you, the viewer, um, and this is where you get to have your own voice to ask any questions at all. So we can't say the question for you until you put it into. Give it to us and then we can talk about it and discuss, right? This is all anonymous, uh, no one gets exposed and it, it stays confidential, okay? We have a very sensitive que question here for us to talk about. Um, so I'm going to say a question and we'll just go around and, and answer. Just give your own answers. Now, you, the viewer, can also give your two cents to it um, and maybe tell us, like, 
kind of your view of how to resolve this question, okay? Uh, this has come from a viewer, and the question is, well, we've just made it short. There are many other questions, but they're way too long, so we just condense this one. Because it's our first slide, we'll just start with this one, okay? Um, and you can submit your own questions for next Friday. The question is, how can I navigate through a relationship with patients, especially in disagreements? Like in other words, how can I keep the peace in my relationship? Um, marriage, you know, partnership, whatever it may be, family life, okay? This question, who's going, who's going to answer first? <coughs> well, I think um, I'll say something. We, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know if we're super qualified to, um, to give our thoughts on, on how to deal with marriage, relationships, um, because I don't think any of us have been married yet. So. But I think you're highly qualified <laughs> to share on your relationship, even but, as companions or yeah. whatever. So, <laughs> I just wanted to establish that so we don't think <laughs> we're, uh, we're telling them what to do. Yeah. Um, but we... They do say that going on a mission and having a companion, um, even though they're of the same gender, does prepare you for marriage in a way, um, in the sense that you often come from very different backgrounds, um, sometimes completely different countries, with different <coughs> cultures, um, and you have to learn to adapt and learn to get along with them, um, regardless of the differences you may have. <coughs> and so I feel like I've been blessed with, with some pretty good companions. Um, all of them have been, have taught me amazing things and I've pretty much had a great time with each of them. But there have been a couple, um, and it's not out of the tour, um, who, who, I, who, who, who it hasn't been smooth sailing with the whole time, um, who, we, who we did have some, some disagreements with and some issues with at times. Um, and I think that's normal. Um, but it was really how I felt at the end of the day, um, it was how I chose to respond to it. Um, I noticed on various occasions that if I felt that I was fed up and that it was unfair, um, that I could, I could, you know, sp just speak my mind and, um, and they, they deserve, you know, they don't deserve any more patience from me. Um, then that never ended well if I had that approach. Um, but if I, if I had the, a more of a humble approach, just thinking what would, what would the saviour do? Well, what did he do to the people that mocked and made fun and were terrible to him? He was always patient. He, he tried to teach them many times, but he would also serve them. He would serve, he would love his enemy. And so I think one of the best ways to heal a relationship um, or to be, to both um, enjoy each other's company is to serve, to look for opportunities to serve the person. Um, not only will that just make you love them more by serving them, which is weird, um, you, you do something for them and then that makes you love them. Um, but being, them being served will make them realise that you're actually making efforts um, to, to heal that relationship. And so both ways, and you'll see, you'll notice that they will probably start doing it back. Um, so I, yeah, I think looking for opportunities to serve is a big one that's helped me. Not just on the mission, but especially you can notice it there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, and I thought you were a cool answer, right? <coughs> yeah. You know what I want to add to that? I was just, I just love to add to that. <coughs> just going along with all the future I actually mentioned, it's where I am heading as well. Um, one of the amazing talk of the Morning Prophet, as all of you are hearing this, there are members you might have known, Aldo Holland. And if any of you doesn't haven't heard of the term prophet. Um, um, but this is an apostle, one of our living apostles of these days. Um, there are men, worthy men, that God has called to help receive our relation for the whole world. And they actually teach us and help us to know the things that we're supposed to do. And one of these amazing talks that I love so much, it's entitled, How Can I Love You? Or How Can I Love Thee? 
I think if I get it wrong and how can I love you, it's how can I love thee. And um, if any of you have the chance, it's, it's probably available on YouTube, look it up because I'm only going to mention part of it. Um, so he, he gave this talk and he was actually advising people that are married and people that are preparing to get married. And he said in his talk that, um, how can I love you? It's the question we should ask our partner that we're not getting along with or someone that we are hoping to be our eternal companion. It's not, why don't you love me? Or what is it that you don't love about me? <laughs> but actually ask them, how can you love them? And just like what Elder Fulcher mentioned, one way we can show them how we can love them, maybe your companions will love you to serve them and show them how you can love them. Um, but it's just exactly what Elder Fulcher mentioned is um, loving as Jesus Christ did. That's what Elder Holland said. How can I love you just as he did, as mm -hmm. Jesus Christ did? And I just wanted to, to share a scripture that actually goes along with this from the Book of Mormon again. As um, I said earlier, it's another testament of Jesus Christ. And here in his, his, in his true gospel, we refer to it a lot because we know it to be the Word of God and it helps guide us in every step of life, like every step of life in every day. And in this scripture, this is where I refer to, um, as Elder Fulcher said, that we have companions. I've actually had 11 companions. That's not because I was bad, but I was just blessed with many amazing sisters to learn from. Because I had a lot of things to learn from. And I actually learned from them, like Elder Fulcher said, we had a good times so and we had a bad times. But um, this scripture actually helps me a lot. Because um, every time I feel something or I need something, I go back to the Book of Mormon. Because it tells me a lot. It always always has something for me. And in, in the book of Moroni, um, chapter 7, verse 45 to 47, so this is one of the teaching of one of the great prophets in the book of Mormon. Um, and I just want to read it out for you because um, it, it talks about this amazing person called Charity. And Charity can make everything amazing. So in this chapter, in this verse it says, And Charity suffered long, and is kind, and envious not, and is not puffed up, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. <coughs> Wherefore, my beloved brethren, or my beloved brothers and sisters, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth, which um, wherefore cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all, for all things must fail. But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. And I know if you guys are hearing this scripture, clearly it answers this question itself. Charity, that's the answer to everything. If you're not getting along with your companion, if you're not getting along with your family members, your friend, or whoever you might not feel good toward, have charity. Charity is the pure love of Christ. And just like one of the greatest events in Christ's life that I love to look at when I feel like I'm struggling myself or when I feel like people are not being too kind to me or doing something to hurt me is when Jesus Christ died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he looked on to our Heavenly Father and asked him to forgive these people. And for me, that's the greatest example of charity. Up to death. And you think you're hurting? I think I'm hurting. And one of my favorite scriptures in the Doctrine and Covenants, um, 636, it says, Look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. This is our Savior inviting us when we're struggling. Look unto him. I promise you, with my heart, with love and with pure charity, if you look unto Jesus Christ, clean unto charity, everything will be well. And your dark days will be turned into light. And yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this Never was not planned. <laughs> Never is. Never is. Let the spirit go. Okay, beautiful answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Bree, and then I'll go to you, uh, Brother Amatua. 
I think also just showing them love, how they receive love. So I think there's five or six different love languages. Find their love language and show them love that way. <laughs> that usually um, works. Um, but also, since being a missionary, you have good moments with a companion, bad moments with a companion. And I was having a bad moment with a companion, so I called my brother, who'd been on a missionary before, a mission before me. And he told them, cook them breakfast. <laughs> so I guess that would be my invitation, cook them breakfast. <laughs> oh, that actually won't work to me because I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great advice. Uh, and you don't have to be in a relationship like a marriage or something like <coughs> that to not learn that principle, not be able to apply that principle. Mm. It's in any situation, you know, throughout your whole life you'll have some experiences with people you don't like or they don't like you, and that's okay. And one thing I also learned about it is that you can't control anyone else, you can only control yourself. And what you do, uh, it, it says a lot, of, a lot about you. <laughs> so yeah, but I like the council has come forward so far, but let's go to Anna Amato. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that for you? It's pretty much what happened on the missions right now. Um, it's like, it's always the pension of, of the missions work, right? Because mm. it's similar, like, it, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, because sometimes it's really, I, I feel like really hard. It's really, like, really hard, it's not easy. And Heavenly Father gives us the way to, um, um, to, to improve ourselves. He gives us the way to improve ourselves and to uh, focus what, what we do on the message work. But sometimes, uh, like like the other, my uh, I didn't mention, so I <laughs> respect that. And so uh, uh, I'm trying to to humble myself because they, they 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 actually doesn't like us as missionaries. They don't want us to 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 come again and to uh, teach the message about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's it's kind of like make me stop stop doing work. It's made me stop doing work. And uh, and I heard and I heard some uh, and I heard the whisper from the spirits. Just be patient and humble yourself and do the work. And this is actually um, important two words that I always hear. And I love to share the scriptures from Alma. It's actually the same book, the Book of Mormon, from Alma chapter seven and verse twenty-three. And it says. And now I would that you should be humble and be submiss uh, submissive and gentle, easy to be uh, entreated, full of patience and long suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God at all times, asking for whatsoever things he, is, um, he stands in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God. Or whatsoever things you do receive, um, it's it's it explains us about what what we what we can do to uh, to focus. How can we help ourselves to be patient? Is through prayer, and give thanks to Heavenly Father, both uh, spiritual and temporal, about everything that we need to help us to uh, continue to uh, uh, to do the work as missionaries, because we know and understand. It's some of the people they try to um, to stop us, but this is what we need to to, to be uh, patient and humble ourselves to continue to sharing this message mm -hmm. through to the people. And I know that the Prophet of Smith, he has a uh, same same feeling, right? The people try to kill him, hate him, but what is he did? He tried. He, he always. Pray to Heavenly Father and to ask Him about how can He love His people, how can He share His love, and to teach these people about the message of the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what exactly the prophet uh, Isaiah in Old Testament said. Um, there's a time that the people in the earth confused about the word of God. So this is where exactly the prophet Joseph Smith teach them because they confused. He confused and he teaches them about his humble self and be patient. 
So I, I know and understand it, that the people trying to um, um, uh, like the Matthew 29 verse 19, the New Testament, the people try to kill us and hate us and throw us into the fire. That's exactly the Bible say. Mm -hmm. And this is what we must do, is to go straight on the line and focus upon our purpose as missionaries to teach them about this book. Mm -hmm. It's the, the key points of our religion. And this is what Heavenly Father wants us to, to do, to add in ourselves as missionaries, is to be humble and patient and pray. Mm -hmm. We can find peace in ourselves when we do all of these things. And this is what I think. That's so much better. Yes, okay. Yes, that's something else that is wondering oh, yeah. about um, what Anna Tua was saying. Uh, I, I think a lot of what we were speaking about is like how we react, and, and I, I think God, He is our Father and He loves us. So our Savior Jesus Christ, as we, we refer to Him as our Savior, so our Savior he saves us from uh, a multitude of different things, and one of the things He can save us from is. Uh, there's um, peace in our partnerships. I don't know how we would say that. Um, but I, I want to read a scripture from the Book of Mormon, and then I want to show you a diagram. This isn't my diagram. I stole it from someone who stole it from someone. It might be in the fossils or something. <laughs> uh, but the scripture is in 2 <coughs> Nephi. It's in chapter 10, verse 24. And it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren and sisters, reconcile yourselves to the will of God and not to the will of the devil and the flesh. And remember, after you are reconciled unto God, that it, that it is only in and through the grace of God that you are saved. Right, so the invitation that the scripture gives us is to reconcile ourselves with God and his will for us. But often, when we want to do it our own way, is when things go bad. <laughs> and it's especially true with relationships. If we want to do it our way, then sometimes it doesn't go so well. But if we reconcile our wills with God's will, God, he wants us to be successful in our marriages. He wants us to be <coughs> successful with the relationships that we have. And he will help us. He'll save us from those negative feelings we sometimes get in relationships. He'll, uh, you know, he's, he's our savior. He can save us from even that. Um, but it is crucial that we are following his will and not, not our own. <laughs> uh, but here's the diagram. So, oh, yes. Person one, person <laughs> two, and God. <laughs> yep. So... We need to be actively working towards having a stronger relationship with our Heavenly Father and with our Saviour Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if our partner does the same, it works. It doesn't matter where we come from or some of the bad habits that we have, if we're both working on having a stronger relationship with our Father in Heaven, then it works. Okay, awesome. Um, I just want to <coughs> conclude what Sister Pooley has mentioned um, and what everyone has said. I was just sitting here thinking about those things. Um, a lot of times we look unto others and think that um, when we argue with them or when we're disagreeing, they might be the one who's wrong. And we think to ourselves, we're doing better. Um, it's just an imitation. Stop that. Mm. <laughs> there's many, many steps. There was many, many steps to get better in that. Just stop it. Um, and it's it goes along with what, that talk that I mentioned when I first did my answer. Is um, Elder Holland invited us to think of the best of each other. Think the best of each other, assume the good and doubt the bad. And that way we won't think that we're better than others. Um, we won't try blaming them for what's happening. But maybe we can take we maybe we can take a moment, take a daily evaluation with ourselves. Um, maybe the problem is our it's us. Maybe we need to fix something. We need to someone has to take the first step and you can't first you can't force anyone to do that. You can do that by starting with yourself. And with those of you that love the Bible, I just want to last share a scripture from the Bible. And this is Jesus Christ inviting us um, in this type of situation. Jesus Christ has said in Matthew 5, <clears throat> 43 to 44, You have heard that it have said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. The neighbors, those around you, doesn't mean just the person next to you or your partner. Anyone who needs your help, your enemy, it doesn't just mean someone is trying to kill you. It's someone that you might hold that hate or envy. Someone that you just have this bad feeling toward. Anyone that you have this bad feeling toward. Maybe someone in Instagram that you don't even know who her name or sh his name is, but you're just jealous because he's prettier than you or something like that. Stop. <laughs> and <clears throat> Jesus Christ said, but I say unto you, not me, but Jesus Christ said, 
Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And send you this with my love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Heavenly Sister. So um, I, I, I kind of like feel like I'm in a room full of angels. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only sinner here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only sinner here. Yeah. You all can be angels. <laughs> wow, I mean, we have been well put today. And I just want to add uh, to what they have said. I'm so grateful I have them as angels here because I, I do completely think that I'm the one who's learning. <laughs> and I have uh, just this past week, I um, celebrated with my husband our 20th anniversary. We've been together 31 years, uh, married 20 years. Oh, okay. <coughs> We've had quite an interesting life together. There used to be a time where we used to actually argue like this, like this person was saying we used to hate each other at times and throw things at each other. We were actually talking about this yesterday. It's funny how we talk about things that are related to the lives. Wow. So we had, because he wasn't a member of the church, and I was, but I was respectful. And that's where you get the 11 years unaccounted for. <laughs> um, but uh, we learnt a lot. We've learnt a lot. And like us doing this live right now, it's the first one. And it would be just like the first time jumping into a relationship with anybody. Uh, you learn as you go. It will not be perfect in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. You will have these problems and they will refine you in, in many ways. Like. I'm so glad you put up that diagram because anyone that is married knows that diagram <laughs> because it, it, the relationship was just me and him before and we were just learning from each other. Like you said, you learn from your companions. Mm -hmm. The purpose is not only for you to be there, but you are to learn from him also. And this is the great thing that you get to experience before you actually do get married. You're experiencing what it's like living with a person that you don't know. Okay? Because <laughs> actually... You may like your person, you may like your person that you're going to marry, you don't know a thing about them. Maybe. You live together, then you'll find out all about them. So, my husband and I were talking about this. Um, we used to get so angry, so angry that our, probably our neighbours can hear us, yelling at each other. We used to grab something and throw it at each other, not physically punch each other or hurt each other like that, oh, but we would prove things at each other. And I, this is a true memory. I remember being pregnant with my daughter. I was so furious with him, but anything could make me furious, zero to 100, but it was just like that. I picked up my suitcase, pregnant woman, and I threw it at him. Oh. And that's how real it was for us in the beginning. And so we went through this journey, and we got to a point where we just don't want to do that anymore. We had children that were growing up, and they were watching us. And they were at an age where they could understand. At the age of like seven, when they were nine, we got them baptized. Because you can see our example was not good. You know, you can't be yelling in a house and your kids not see you. They will see you. You're, you're not only affecting... I've said this too, when my family have got angry and get angry with each other and, and with all of us there, be mindful of the people who are in the room. They're not involved in your argument. But you've just involved them by being there and yelling in the same room. And it's the same thing. When you have children, you're responsible for them. So your example is everything. So what we learned, like 11 years through that experience, 11 years I was working in church, I learned that we needed to do better. And the only way we needed to do better was following that guy out there, Jesus yeah. Christ. And we didn't know how to do that at first, but we learned line upon line. And day by day, <laughs> we tried to do it together. We took our, our children to be baptised. My husband became baptised when we were married. All those things for 11 years we weren't doing. We started with the basics. And every day from there on, we're still learning. Mm. And it's a journey through eternity. The following year, we took our children to a temple to be baptised, I mean, to be sealed to us. Oh, okay. And it has been a consistent journey. Not a perfect one, because it's, it's never going to be perfect. But it's one that we will continue to learn how to respect each other. You will lose your, your nut how many times in a day for a little reason. 
That's the reality of it. Like we've lost it. Like we, we, we didn't even know it's our 20th anniversary. But when we found out, when we read the date, <laughs> it's our 20th anniversary. We calculated the years, but we don't keep up. And every day's your anniversary kind of thing. And we found out we've been doing this for 20 years married and 11 years before that. How did we last? How did we do that? When we were fighting and we're doing it. The only way is follow him. Every single day of your life. That you'll become the person that he wants you to be. It's not about anything else but what he desires you to be. And you'll find your way as you continue on this journey of striving for him. It's, it's not about, you are not going to have control of your life. You cannot control another person, even to this day. Mm. My husband is him and I am me. But we control ourselves. I can never force him to do anything he doesn't want to do. That's the reality. But if you just live a life like him, Jesus Christ, it will always work out. Like I said, Anna, humble yourself just like him. And they will humble themselves too. Something about having the spirit in your home. <laughs> Something about seeking that spirit every single day. It's the effort. To your effort, the Lord adds his power. And I absolutely believe that. So <laughs> that's our QA, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is how, how awesome and real it can be and, and striving to help other people. Like when we came on the before we came into life, we know what we want to learn, but it's not about that. It's what we want to help you learn. And what you can help us to learn also. Because like you know, we're, I'm the sinner here. You know? Well, I'm living the real life. We all are. <laughs> no, we're, we're all learning together, right? Okay, just in closing, we did have another question. Oh, person who gave that question, please ponder in your heart and your mind. Take whatever you can from this life and pray and ask Heavenly Father for guidance and help yourself. And mighty prayer go to him, turn to him. Look unto to me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. Yeah? BNC 636. We have one last question. Now this one, you're gonna share it and I, I actually think do we need a share testimony? Class with the testimony. What I would like to do is do a combined testimony. Testimony is important. Okay, so we're gonna seal our testimony by having a combined one. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now, the, the testimony is really a sentence to answer the, our friend's question about the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. <coughs> so we're going to start with <coughs> me, yeah. and we'll go around until we complete that sentence, okay? Got it? So we've never rehearsed this before. This is like fresh air. <coughs> um, but yeah. All right, we'll see how we go. Go by the Spirit. Okay. Oh, the question was uh, about the Book of Mormon. Do we need to say, when we share our testimony, do we need to say as far as it is trans translated correctly, like the Bible? So we're going to share our truth about what that is to us, okay? So I'll start first. I. And we'll go around here, you have to say a word each to, to make a sentence, okay? No. <laughs> no. So the sentence is I know. It's K N O W. Yeah, <clears throat> I know. That. The. Book of Mormon. Oh, Book of Mormon. <laughs> oh, turn to me. Is. The. Another. <laughs> Testament. Of, oh, I just of, oh. oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Christ, yeah, or the word, word of. Words. Closing words? Yeah. Um, 
Oh, and. Oh, and. Oh, and. Oh, and. Oh, sorry guys, we did not, we did not read this at all, so we're just doing that this. That was cool. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, um, Daryl is, Daryl, I think it's Daryl, is the one who answered, asked that question, yes, you do not need to say that it is translated correctly and it is perfect as it is. Yeah. It's not being passed on to anyone else to, to translate and, and change it <coughs> or decipher or anything, it is perfect as it is. Um, who's going to stay up here? Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for having us. <laughs> who's going to stay up? See you next time. See you next time. See you next Friday. Next Friday. Bring on the questions. Okay. Who's going to stay up here? Tahiri. She said that. I'll go to her love to say it. Yeah. I'll go to Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this wonderful day we've been blessed with, uh, for the opportunity that we have to come together, um, discuss these questions, but also share our testimony and share in this, in this wonderful spirit we felt here, and be able to connect with those online in other parts of the world um, to, to hopefully touch and inspire their lives as well. We ask you that the things that we have learnt here today may be something that we apply into each of our lives in some way um, and that we might be able to receive further guidance and further answers from our Heavenly Father um, in, in response to the questions that we have. And we say these things now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, bye everybody. See you. Bye. bye. bye, 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 bye Enjoy bye. your day. And uh, if uh, you see these sisters and brethren on the side of the street, what are you going to give them? KFC. KFC! <laughs> or referrals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even better. Just give a name for a referral. Um, and just one last point before we leave, because I didn't say it in a lot. Uh, there's one word that you can always say to diffuse any situation, and that is the word sorry. Sorry. Just say sorry. My husband is the best at saying this. I find it very hard, but that's why we've lasted 15 years. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's very hard. Oh. I'm, I'm prideful. That's why I'm a sinner. Okay. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Have a good weekend.